This video takes on lumped capacitance, which uh, is actually a transient uh, process. Uh, in other words, our temperature is going to change over time, um, but we can still think of it as one dimensional. And so this is our last most complex way of uh, staying in one dimension with, uh, with heat transfer. Let's actually check that. So we're going to we're going to dig into some math here uh, in a way that we haven't done uh, in earlier videos. Um, so, but see if you can follow along here because it's it's an it's an important way of thinking through this problem. So what did we do? We started with this idea that there's a balance. The, the energy that is leaving the sphere is all leaving by convection. The change of energy of the sphere is equal to the amount of energy leaving the sphere. Okay, so let's define Q convection. So we just throw in our rate equation here. And then we're going to rearrange that to just uh, have a, our differential equation on one side. But before we do that, we're going to try to take away a complication. This term is going to confuse us as we try to uh, solve this differential equation. So we're going to replace it with theta. And that theta is called an excess temperature. Uh, and that excess temperature just defines the difference between the temperature at any given moment in the sphere, uh, the surface of that sphere. Um, and the difference between that and the environmental temperature. And so we're going to call that theta. Now, why can we do this where we replace dt dt with d theta dt? Uh, the reason is because this is constant. Okay, so if we write out d theta dt, we put in t minus t environment uh, in for theta because that's what theta is. And then we divide this differential equation so that we have, because this is a minus, we can do that. We have a dt dt minus dt environment over dt, this term here. And what's this? Well, that's zero, right? Because that's not changing. And so it's equal to dt dt. So this guy here, the change in the difference is the same as the change in the temperature. Okay, so that's how we get here. Now we've got to solve that, right? So that's a differential equation, but we can deal with this. It's a simple first order uh, equation. So we're going to separate uh, d theta and dt out. So all I've done is moved this guy. Actually, I guess I've moved this to the other side, made this a one, right, by dividing by h a theta. And then I've separated by moving the dt over here to the other side and integrated both sides. This is all, um, a lot of this here is constant. Uh, and so we're going to be able to move that outside of our equation, of our in integral. And we end up with this integral here. This guy here just integrates to t, right? And this one here, the integral of 1 over theta d theta, is the natural log of theta, okay? And then we have a constant here, an integration constant that we'll have to deal with. But this gives us an expression for time in terms of temperature, right? The time that it's taking to get a certain theta, a certain temperature difference. Now we want to find that CA because we need that, um, that constant. Uh, and to do that, we have to define an initial condition, right? Um, so just, just solving a first order differential equation here. So we've got t equal, at t equals zero, theta equals theta initial, right? Theta initial is just going to be our initial temperature minus the temperature of the environment. And we apply that um, initial condition to find our coefficient. So we, here's our equation. All we've done is say at time equals zero, um, theta is going to be equal to theta initial. 
And we solve this for CA, right? So all we're doing is moving this guy over to the other side. So it's not real pretty here, but this is all constant. Uh, and this is a known initial difference, temperature difference. Okay, so that's going to be our, um, our constant of integration. And that allows us to write out a particular solution here. We found a general solution before. Here's our particular solution. Uh, and you can see that this constant appears twice. Um, and so we can do a little bit of math magic here. Um, pull that guy out. We get a natural log minus another natural log, which is the same as a natural log of the first term divided by the second term. So we've reduced our equation to this guy here. That's the time it takes to get to a certain theta. Okay, a certain temperature difference. We're, we're moving, we're, get, we're getting there. Okay, um, now we want to replace that excess temperature and get our temperatures back in. So we're going to get rid of theta. Uh, and we know theta is just T minus T environment. Uh, and so our new equation looks like that. Um, and at that point, we know what we're doing. We have a time, the, the time it takes to get it to a certain temperature. Um, how did we get there? We created a control volume at the sphere surface. Okay. Um, we assumed that our temperature inside the sphere was spatially constant. Okay. And that allowed us to set up uh, an equation in which whatever was leaving the, uh, the sphere, whatever heat energy was leaving the sphere, was going to match the change of internal energy inside the sphere. And then we solve that differential equation for time. Okay. And now we're, we're done with that, right? We've, we've got our nice equation for time. 